Hello, welcome back to another video with me. This is Mom Drea. I will be using Kenneth Lawton and Jane Lawton for management information system. And I will be talking about a very interesting topic today on telecommunications, the internet and wireless technology. Again, if you wish to download a video, please look for me in YouTube, click subscribe, or you can um, comment below for the audio format and MP4 format also for all the materials. We are going first to our chapter opening today about Continental AG, the headquarters in um, Hanover, Germany. This is a global auto and truck parts manufacturing company which has about 164,000 employees in 46 countries and it is also the world's one of the world's largest tire manufacturing and top five automotive suppliers in the world. So in here, Continental Tires experience um, some of the powerful capabilities and opportunities provided by the contemporary network technology. And here, the, the company uses the wireless networking and radio frequency identification, which is RFID technology the mobile computers and materials inventory management software to automate the tracking of components as they move through the production process. So we are going to the chapter opening, which calls attention to the important points raised by this case and this chapter. Let us listen to this video. Hi, I'm Chet Namudri from Cisco. As Global Manufacturing Industry Marketing Director, I'm interested to help solve our, our manufacturing customers' industry challenges. I'm pleased to be joined today by Peter Granger, an Industry Solutions Manager for my team. Peter, we've just been part of a great seminar hosted by Cisco and Aeroscout, focused on Continental Tires of Americas and their case study. Continental, of course, is a subsidiary of Continental AG in Europe. Continental talked about their use of the Cisco wireless network infrastructure and a real-time location system, RTLS, from Aeroscout to manage work in process in their North American facility. Can you remind us in just a few words what the business problem was and how Cisco and Aeroscout were able to help? Sure, sure, I'd love to. Well, Continental Tire was facing challenges in keeping up with demand, which is a really nice problem to have, but it needed to be addressed. Uh, they were seeing demand beyond capacity at that burn farm to the south. Long as the day's initial burst in return, found that now the inventory of thousands of carriers was causing unnecessary idle time and setups. Working with global data sciences, Aeroscout, Cisco, and the local Cisco and Aeroscout partner applied group, Continental Tire implemented a solution designed to efficiently track and manage tire assembly and material carriers. The facility uses Aeroscout's Wi Fi real time location services solution to help forklift truck operators quickly find and deliver materials and tire components to the right station according to customer orders and the optimal manufacturing schedules. As a result, Continental has reduced delays and production stoppages, minimized the idle time of machines, and significantly increased daily throughput. That's fantastic. As you know, Cisco and Aeroscout have worked together for a number of years developing and refining this real-time context-aware solution. And we now have several case studies demonstrating real business value. What is Continental seeing in terms of business benefit? Good question, Chair. Well, Continental and Global Data Sciences have already stated that the automated work in process tracking system drives lean manufacturing and enables a 20% decrease in component tire losses. That's very significant in terms of the number of tires saved from the scrap heap every day. Added to which, Global Data Sciences tells us Continental Tire estimates a payback period of less than six months. That is just impressive. What a great example for other manufacturers to follow. Thanks, Peter. The Cisco Aeroscout Context-Aware solution is available as a tried and tested solution from our partners. 
To find out more, please go to cisco.com slash go slash manufacturing for more information. Thanks for So what did you get from the chapter opening? Uh, we know that the continental tires production environment extends over a very large area and requires intensive oversight and coordination to make sure that the components are available when and where they are needed in the production process. Tracking the components manually was very slow and troublesome, increasing the possibility that the components would be overlooked or lost. So the management decided, decided that the wireless technology and RFID tagging provided a solution and arranged for the deployment of the wireless RFID network, which is AeroScout, throughout the entire um, production facility. The network made is much easier to track components and to optimize the target track movements. This is how Continental Tires had to redesign their production and other work processes and also train the employees in the new system to take advantage of the new technology. Training is also very important. So what are the problem in our case? Inefficient manual processes, large production environment. The manual tracking was very time consuming and inaccurate and the plant often lost track of fire components altogether. So the missing materials have created bottlenecks and production delays at a time when the business was now growing or increasing in demand and the company needed to increase the production capacity. So the solution is for them to track the components in real time, optimize transportation and expedite com uh, communications. So for the technology, what did they do? They deploy Wi-Fi wireless network they also deploy RFID tags and software like AeroScout, MobileView, and they deploy material inventory tracking software. They also deploy Hannibal, Motorola, and DLOG mobile computers. Uh, what did the, the management do? They select the wireless technology appropriate for their for their operations and they altogether revise the production plan. As an organization, they revise also the job functions and the production processes and they train the employees. So this demonstrates the use of technology in production and supply chain to increase the efficiency and lower the cost. We've already discussed this also in our previous chapters about RFID. Some of the applications used uh, that used RFID is one is on our school where we have we use an RFID ID to enter the school, which stored all our information. Even in the library, um, we also use them in the logistics. And have you ever been to like um, the tall, where you have the tall tag? and then you wonder how they build you so when you pass by the tall you could see the um driver feedback display which get all your information from your tall tag even if you put the tall tag at your bag and then um this is also used for traffic monitoring um and then close the we use the tag reader at the top. Let's go over some of the topic. So what is networking and the communication trends now? If you run uh, or work in a business, you can do without networks now. So you, you need to communicate 
rapidly with your customers, suppliers, employees, and um, and but until the 1990, the businesses used the postal system or telephone system without the voice or fax for communications. Firms before used uh, two fundamentally different types of network, the telephone networks and the communication networks. But today, however, you and your employees use the computers now, the email and messaging, the internet, cell phones, mobile com computers connected to wireless networks for this purpose. Um, networking and the internet are now nearly synonymous with um, doing business. So can you give me an example of convergence? This is not the, the one that converge. <laughs> so how fast is your broadband today? And how many of you even have broadband? That's a challenge now that we are under the quarantine. The video I sent, um, like working at, what are the applications used in working at home, useful applications. So, so internet users have high speed broadband connections provided by the telephone and uh, cable TV companies running at one to 15 million bits per seconds or BPS. Note that unlike 1990, 2000, in the year 2000, typically uh, internet access speeds were 56 kbps over a telephone line, um, costing about uh, like a cent. Whereas today, the broadband speeds are just one to five mbps costing one cent per kilobit or just 10 cents per gigabit. So what about you guys? How fast is your internet connections at home or at school or at work? If you know the speed of your cell phone's internet, um, we have to be aware of this telecommunication systems. For the broadband wireless, um, increasingly voice and data communications as well as internet access are taking place over broadband wireless platforms such as cell phones, mobile handheld devices, and what else? Um, PCs in wireless networks. Computer network have two or more connected computers. So the major components here in the simple network is client and server um, computers, network interfaces or NICs, connection medium, the network operating systems, hubs, switches, and routers. So most networks also contain a switch or a hub acting as the connection between point, a uh, connection point between the computers. What are hubs? Hubs are simple devices that connects network components, sending a packet of data to all other connected devices. The switch, um, has more intelligence than a hub and can filter and forward data to a sp specified destinations on the network. So what if you want to communicate with another network, such as the internet? You would need a router. What is a router? A router is a communications processor used to route packets of data through different networks, ensuring that the data sent get the data sent gets to the correct address. 
So here is the illustrations uh, of a very simple network consisting of this um, network operating system, computers, and the dedicated server. It's, this also shows the cable wiring and the connecting the devices, the network interface cards or the NICs, the switch and the router. Although the um, network operating system or NOS is shown as part of the server, um, note that depending on the type of the software, an NOS may also be designed to reside on a client computers. These are called what? Peer-to-peer -peer networks. So do any of you have a home computer network? You might have to look into it and describe, you can already describe the elements of the network. Now let us look at the additional components that we can expect to find out in a network of a large company that has many locations and thousands of employees. We will have an illustration later on in the next slides. So what is the networks in large companies? Um, hundreds of local area networks or LANs linked to firm-wide corporate network. There are various powerful servers like the website, the corporate intranet, our mm -hmm. intranet, the back-end systems. What is back-end systems? Um, anybody? The mobile wireless LANs, which is also the Wi-Fi networks. Um, and then we also have the video conferencing system, the telephone network, and the wireless cell phones. This is the corporate infrastructure. As you can see in this illustration, um, this is more complex. There is a large scale pump corporate wide networks. Here you can see that the corporate network infrastructure support also the mobile um, say, mobile say, sales force using the cell phones and the smartphones. Um, mobile employees linking the computer website, the internal com company networks using the wireless local um, area network. Wi-Fi networks and a video conferencing system to support the managers across the world. In addition to these computer networks, um, the firm's infrastructure usually includes the separate telephone uh, that ran on the existing network. As you can see from this figure, the large uh, corporate network infrastructure uses the wide variety of technologies. Everything from the ordinary telephones, um, service and corporate data networks to the internet, uh, to the internet service, wireless um, internet and cell phones also. We have to note the difference between the wireless LAN and which allows the wireless access within the net office and the mobile Wi-Fi network, which allows the internet access to the employees outside of the office. So the advantage of the telephone-based wireless systems is that they do not require a Wi-Fi hotspot to work. And in fact, it can connect users to the entire globe through the telephone networks. The cable networks, um, which is the major competitors of the telephone company internet providers, have recently developed a mobile options. Example, um, can you think of that? The Optimum Cable or the Comcast has installed the network Wi-Fi hotspots allowing the cable sub subscriber wireless subscribers wireless access to the internet. 
the key de digital technologies. What is client serving server computing? This is um, this um, slide will look on the main technologies in use today for networks, which is the client server com computing. Next slide is the packet switching and the TCI, TCP or IP. I've mentioned about uh, client server computing on our chapter five, which talks about the distributed computing model in which some of the processing power is located within small, inexpensive client computers and resides literally on desktop, laptops, or in handheld devices. The clients link through the network control by network server computers and then the server sets the rules of communication for the network and provides every client with an address so the others can find it on the network. So the client server computing has largely replaced the main centralized mainframe computer and the very um, example of this is the internet which is the largest implementation of the clients or server computing um, another one is the packet switching which is the method of um, slicing digital messages into parcel or packets like as a shaped packet sending packets along different communication paths as they become available and then reassembling these packets at the destinations as you can see here in our illustration note that the circuit switch networks were expensive and wasted available communications capacity so the circuit had to be maintained whether data was being sent or not. It is also important to note that the packet switching enables the packet to follow many uh, different ads, like the packet one, two, and packet three. So what are the, um, what are the advantage of this cap capability? If one path is blocked due to the accident or power failure, the data will automatically be switched by the routers to the open path. However, in the truly massive outage like what happened in 9-11 or September 11, 2011 attack on the World Trade Center, um, nearby metropolitan servers were knocked out and for the period of several days the network access was limited in the new york metropolitan area so the packet switching is more efficient use of network communications capacity so let's look at the third which is a tci tcp or the ip and the connectivity um, Protocols, we've talked about this before, which is the rules that govern transmission of information between two points. The Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP, and the Internet Protocol is the common worldwide uh, standard that is the basis for the Internet. Note that in a network, there are typically many different types of hardware and software components that need to work together to transmit and receive information. The different components in a network communicate with one another only but by adhering to a common set of rules, which is the protocol. So in the past, many diverse propriety, proprietary and incompatible protocols often force the business firms to just purchase the computing and communications equipment from a single vendor. But today, the corporate networks are increasingly using a single common and worldwide standard called the 
TCP or the Transmission Control Protocol and uh, the Internet Protocol. So they are actually a set of protocols, the main one of which uh, is a suite, suite, suite of protocols and the main one of which are TCP and IP. So it was developed in the early 1970s to support the U.S. Deve Department of Defense Advanced Research Project Agency or DARPA and the efforts to help the scientists transmit data among different types of computers over a long distances. There are four layers of this reference model, which is the application layer, transport layer, the internet layer, and the network interface layer. So, let us talk about more about that. So the, this one um, illustrates the four layers of the Department of Defense reference model for the TCP and the IP. What happens here is when the computer A sends message to computer B is that the data that the computer A creates is transferred within the computer from the application layer to subsequent layers in sequence. And in this process, it is split into packets and information is added to each stage, ultimately translating the packets into a form that can be transferred over the network interface. After traveling over the network interface, the the packets um, are reassembled at the recipient computers from the network interface layer up to the um, ultimately used by the application layer. So the internet layer as defined is the internet which is responsible for addressing the routing, the packaging, which is called the IP diagram, datagrams, and then the internet protocols is the one that used in this layer. So as you can see, the start, which is the layer for the applications, it enables the client application programs to just access the other layers and defines the protocols that the applications use to exchange data. One of these applications is the commonly used HTTP, right? The Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is used to transfer the web pages file. While the transport is the one, this is, this is the layer that is responsible for providing the application layer with communication and packet services. This layer includes the TCP and other protocols. For the network interface layer, which is at the bottom of the reference model, the net, it is the one that is responsible for placing the packets on and receiving them from the network medium, which could be any networking, any networking technology. Signal versus uh, digit, uh, analog signal versus digital um, signal. Let us look at the type of networks that the organizations use. So what are the difference between these two? There are two ways to communicate the message in a network. It is either using an analog signal or a digital signal. An analog is the one that is represented by uh, a continuous waveform, a continuous waveform that passes through the communication medium and has been used for voice communication, such as the telephone handsets, 
the speaker on your computer or an iPad earphone, which is all of which create an analog waveforms that you can hear in your ear. So the, the digital um, signal, on the other hand, is discrete and binary waveform, which is zero or one, rather than a continuous waveform. So the digital signals communicate the information as strings of two discrete states, one bit and zero bits, which are represented as on and off electrical impulses, uh, electrical pulses. So we are, um, note that the network can be defined by the way the client interacts which is um, client server versus peer-to-peer -peer. The, the type of physical medium to carry the signals which is the inter in ethernet fast ethernet etc and the way in which computers are connected and send signals to each other or the topology. You can see here is the illustration of the com types of computer networks. The personal area network, which is a portion or limited area in your building and then the land can be uh, more than the one building or 500 meter radius or half a mile and then the metropolitan network uh, metropolitan area networks is a city or a metropolitan area which connects all the buildings and the wide area networks is global which is a transcontinental or global area. You can see here the module, uh, a modem which is a device that translates the digital signals into analog form or vice versa so that the computers can transmit data over uh, analog networks such as the telephone and cable network. By the way, what does modem stands for? Um, it stands for what? Modem for modular the module maker. So we are going to the physical transmission media. Note that many of the telephone systems in buildings have a twisted wires installed for analog communication, but they can be used for digital communication as well. As today, the telecommunication companies are starting to bring the fiber optic cable into the home for high-speed internet access. You, you can see that the transmission capacity of the medium, which is known as BPS, is dependent on its frequency, which is measured in hertz and or a cycles per second. What is bandwidth? Now that everyone is at home, self-quarantined, what did you notice? There would be, there is like um, slower because um, everyone was grabbing for a portion of a bandwidth. Um, bandwidth is basically the difference between the highest and the lowest fre frequency that can be accommodated on a single channel um, the wireless transmission transmission devices uh, is also uh, is like uh, satellites and then cellular system i will be going over on the next 
video, I will be pointing out some examples of this, which is, you can see this just at your home, at your school. Basically, nowadays, it is everywhere. So let us look at the next video.